This is her interpretation of what a settle should look like. We're getting some tension on the leash here. I don't completely trust ducks myself. I'm Zach George, I'm a dog trainer. Meet my new project, Kona. I've got just three weeks to train her and set her up for the most well-behaved life possible. That means I need to work on the most common puppy issues like potty training, how to actually pay attention, stopping things like play biting, chewing, separation anxiety, getting along with other animals, leash walking, and teaching her everything a good dog needs to know. Real dog training doesn't always go smoothly, and that's why I'm going to show you every success and mistake and how I work through all the most challenging parts of raising a new puppy. Welcome to your new puppy survival guide. Today is a huge day for Kona because it's time to take her on her first real walk in public. Leash training any dog is a journey, like training dogs anything else. You're watching this video because you want to learn how to connect with your dog better. I want to make sure that you're aware that I have a completely free digital dog training class, 30 Day Perfect Pub, that's designed to give you a crash course in what you need to know throughout the first year and beyond of training your dog. It is completely free, and I'll teach you how to train all of the foundational skills that every dog needs to know. Of course, you're going to get exclusive video lessons from me, access to an incredible private community, Community where you can interact with other pet parents and dog trainers, and there's even an app that will help you stay on track and give you easy access to all of the lessons no matter where you are. I'll have a link in the description where you can sign up for 30 Day Perfect Pub and download the Pupford app. Leash walking is a whole saga that can take months to really work out with many dogs, but we're gonna see how she does. I mean, maybe she's a natural leash walker or maybe she needs lots of work. So far, I'm liking this though. She seems pretty content. She's not wild yet anyway. All right, Kona, let's go. Come on, girl. Yeah. I'm choosing right now to walk in the street here to give her a little extra room to explore. It's a pretty quiet street, so as opposed to the sidewalk where she would be running into people's yards and everything else. But you can see how she's cautiously approaching the world. She's not used to being out here. No doubt there's lots of new smells and things to take in. Now you might remember this whole concept of leash walking for Kona is brand new. I mean, we just recently had her very first leash walking training session in the living room. Because remember, we like to start inside where the environment's easy before taking her outside where it's much harder to get your dog's attention on you when they're new to training. Come on. Yeah, hey, that was good. Like how she pepped up there. Now we've got some grass over here. This is a park access point. So why don't we let her check this out? This ought to be exciting. Kona, come on. Hey, what's this? I got a treat for ya. Kona, come. Oh, that did it, good job. You can see she was reluctant. She's like, wait a minute, I don't know about this. I don't know if I wanna go on that wet grass. In fact, I don't wanna be on the wet grass. I'd rather be over here which might be okay. The point of a session like this is more for exposure and just giving them the general experience of accessing the world, you know? Got a jogger passing by there. Hey. Yes. Very good. Man, she's, she's doing really well. I'm actually kind of shocked at how well she's paying attention with being out here for such a short period of time. Kona. Yeah, look how responsive she is. And this is what I mean, every dog is different. You might remember with Inertia, when we would bring her out here around this age, she was like, I've got to check out everything and not quite as responsive as Kona is being at 13 weeks. Can you give me a sit? Oh, you are making my day, look at this. Not only did she sit, she's sitting in a new place. She's sitting on damp grass. Good girl, okay. I shouldn't celebrate here too quickly because it does seem to be in Kona's nature. When she's in a new situation, she's pretty reserved. But as some time goes on, she tends to open up a little more and get a bit more rambunctious. So we'll see how she does. But one thing that I wanna be sure of is that I do reinforce these good behaviors while I'm getting them, even if it's because she's reserved. Kona, yes. Good. By the way, she's taking treats also. If a dog was really overstimulated, they'd be like, I don't care about that treat. I'd rather look at that dog. But the fact that she is taking treats may be an indicator, probably is an indicator that she is perfectly content and comfortable right now. Very well adjusted so far. Okay, come. Good job, girl. Very good. Nice. And I'm just doing these audits. I'm not trying to burst into a full on come when called training session right now. I'm just trying to check her skills out piece of trash over here. So this is a good example of why you want a leash on your dog. She's going for this paper towel over here, so I'm able to restrain her, but restraining her isn't gonna teach her. Yes, good girl. 
The fact that she offered a voluntary sit there and even gave me her attention very briefly was nice. Leave it. Leave it alone. Here, look at me. Yes, there we go. How about that? Good girl. So you can see her drawing on her leave it experience here. And I know a lot of you are asking me about how to get your puppy or your dog to stop picking up every piece of garbage they encounter on a walk. And I'm sorry to say guys, but you really have to be one step ahead of them until they learn a genuine real life leave it. And this is how you do it. Try to take the time to communicate with them and show them how to behave when you encounter something. Resist the urge to overcorrect with a leash and really try to take the time to explain them to them. If you have time, I mean, sometimes you just have to move on or sometimes for your dog's safety, you have to prevent them from having access to whatever it is the item is. Are you ready to continue on your walk? We're gonna go this way, ready? Kona! Yes, good. Okay, she doesn't seem too interested in a treat there, so I'm not going to press the issue. But now look at this. Now we're getting some resistance, see that? See how she's like, I wanna stay over here. When your dog freezes up like this, I mean, it can mean a number of things. Maybe they're just new to a place like Kona is, or maybe they're genuinely nervous and you have to take that into account. Understanding context is everything. God, let's go, let's go, that's it. Good girl, getting a little playful. Come on. You want this? <laughs> Shake off, here we go. Look at that, guys. Yes. Good work. Maybe we should try this street over here and see how she does on the street. Come on, pretty girl. Kona. Right here, again, I'm, I'm resisting the urge to kind of assist her along by pulling her here. I want, I'd prefer that she come voluntarily. <laughs> Leave it alone. Look at me. Kona, come. Come on. Yes, there we go. The real life Leave It, Look At Me combo in action. That's why we teach it. Remember, we went over that early on in this series. It takes a minute for them to really understand, hey, I really mean leave everything alone in your environment. Come on. Yes. You want this? No? Okay. We often talk about the two main types of currency, food and play, right? Here she's starting to get a little less interested in food, and I don't think it's because she's necessarily overwhelmed. I think she's just really curious about her environment. So we can actually use the environment itself to reinforce good behavior. So when she's starting to pull like this, or even go into a down like that, if I can get her attention on me, the walk itself continuing might serve as a reinforcing event, right? Something that makes it worth her while to comply. Well, I see we have a piece of plastic coming up, our nemesis. All right, come on, we can do this. Come on, Kona. Kona, let's go. Come on, let's go. Leave it. Yes, good girl, come on. <laughs> good job, girl. All right, we got it, we did it. It was a little messy, but we got past the plastic. It will not defeat us. So really good here. I'm not seeing obvious signs of reactivity here, which is always good. And by the way, if your puppy was reacting to bikes or other things more vocally, that would be within the range of normal. And that's something that we can address. I dealt with that quite a bit with my own dog, Inertia, as she was a puppy and beyond. Today, for this particular lesson, you might notice I'm using an extra long leash. This is about 10 feet uh, because I'm not gonna insist that she stay glued to me. I mean, often the temptation with a new dog is to be like, all right, well, if I never let them get away with something, then they'll never know that they can't do that thing, whatever it is. In this case, if I keep her glued to my side, she'll know that that's the only place you can go. There's a time and a place for that logic, but their first leash training session in public is probably not it. Because in my experience, I really feel they need to satisfy that curiosity pretty extensively before you can insist on really great behavior in a variety of environments and contexts. With leash walking or matters of giving your dog broad socialization and exposure to the world, it is a little more give and take than say, making sure your environment is completely controlled to keep your dog from chewing up power cords or couch cushions when you're at home. So you do kind of have to balance this mindset depending on what it is you're working on at a specific moment. I wonder what she was barking at. That's called a tree. Okay, come on. Very responsive, good work. And again, no treat there, but hey, you get to continue on exploring this new alien world. We have a car coming, so we're gonna get out of the road. Come on, look at that, good girl. 
It'll be interesting to compare this particular leash walking session to one we do, you know, over the next several days to see how she does. Does she get more confident where she starts being more rambunctious or does she stay like this or does she get even better? It depends on so many different variables. This is why understanding the individual dog is everything when you're teaching dogs. You might be seeing a pattern here. We started much of our training inside the house and we recently graduated to the park behind our house, less populated. And now we're in a slightly more busy and populated environment with lots of houses, barking dogs in the background, things like that. So you can see how we're gradually working up to more and more intense environments, but we're not just throwing her in the deep end and going to the busy city necessarily. Hey, can you, can you leave that alone? Yes, come on. Oh my gosh the smartest dog in history. Look at you. Leave it. Uh -uh. Look at me. Yes. Literally the leave it, look at me combo. See how she reacts to this dog walking by? Cute. Very good reaction. Yes. Good work. Want this? See there? Good job. Nice work. Good reaction. No barking, no lunging. I'm going to let her satisfy her curiosity by looking, by smelling, gathering information there. It's great. I'm going to see if she'll continue on the walk. Kona, let's go. Come on. What is happening right now? A lot of this is due to her nature, and then a lot of this might be due to some of the setup work we've already done to prime her for an experience like this. But I couldn't be more excited about her willingness to pay attention to me while we're moving in a brand new environment. Come on, girl, let's go. There is a little tension here. Notice this tension right here. She's lagging behind. In much the same way, I might go up to a three-year-old child and say, okay, come on, let's go, and encourage them to go. I'll, I'll do the same with a dog, but I just don't want to rely on the leash to really train core concepts. I just want that leash to be there to manage her surroundings. Sometimes people will ask me, you know, why do you use a harness? Doesn't that encourage pulling? But if you're really teaching your dog to think from the inside outward, whatever they're wearing shouldn't matter. It's about understanding the concept of, oh, I stay with you when we walk, regardless of what I'm wearing. So someone's taken out the garbage up here and she gave a slight reaction. And again, I think these are really powerful moments. Believe it or not, they are. I mean, letting her see these people from a distance, understanding that, wow, Primates are all over the place in my world. Sometimes they move big green garbage cans. There's value in that. I didn't know someone was gonna take out the garbage up there and potentially catch her off guard. I didn't know we were going to encounter that specific dog who walked past our path. I didn't know we were going to encounter plastic on the ground that we had to work with. So there are a lot of organic experiences that your dog's going to have and you as a trainer are going to experience. When you're walking with a dog, particularly a dog that's new to training, don't be on your phone, don't be distracted. You really need to have all of your attention on them so that you can really read them. I wonder how she'll behave when we get near those ducks. Where there are ducks, there are duck poops. So we'll also want to be on the alert for those. <laughs> so she just paused. She's like, wait a minute. Those are birds and they're bigger than me. So she's okay. That's fine. See how I'm not rushing her past them. She wants to back away. I'm going to let her do that right now. That's her instincts kicking in like, that's not normal. I've never seen anything like that before. That's okay. So you can see, I wouldn't quite call this necessarily fearful behavior as much as I would probably call it just guarded and being a little unsure, but certainly it's on the spectrum. The objective when we see our dog behave like this is to have a game plan of building up their confidence around things like ducks moving forward. So in this case, I might see if I can get her attention and get a sit. Yes, good. Notice the distance here. I mean, you can probably imagine if we were really close to the ducks, she would be like, I'm, I can't listen to sit. Are you kidding me? Look at this. But this working distance right here is proving to be pretty effective. Yes, good. And I'm not so much focused on obedience, even though I did ask for a sit. I'm more focused on just conditioning her that, hey, look, when there's birds around, Things are good, especially when you behave well. You're gonna get something you like. <laughs> the best interest of all of us, maybe we'll go around the ducks a little bit more rather than, come on, Kona. Kona, come. Yes. Good. Here, here's a treat. Come on. Nice work. 
And again, letting her look. So you see there how the ducks probably weren't gonna budge quite as much as I had hoped. So that's why I wanted to go around them and create a little bit more distance. And truth be told, I don't completely trust ducks myself. So. so she's getting a little more brave. Look, she wants to maybe smell them and check them out at a distance. Look at this body language, isn't this fun? Loosely, she's not lunging and pulling. All very good, very good stuff here. But I think what I'm gonna do is just encourage her to kind of gently move on with the walk because moving forward, that's kind of the pattern we're going to want. Dogs like to check out everything and we ultimately wanna be able to say to them, okay, that's normal, let's keep going. We don't need to check out every little thing in the world. Let's see if we can get a rough draft example of that. Kona, yes, come on. Oh, nice work. Yeah, good job, there we go. See how we're voluntarily getting her to walk and stay with me here? That's what we want. We want her voluntarily, wherever possible, doing the behaviors that we like the most. And I'm not sure if you guys have noticed though, but we're on a slightly busier road now than we were before, so we have to be on the sidewalk. So she's getting that additional exposure to loud moving cars driving by. A lot of puppies will have issues with, with cars when they see them the first time or first few times. But so far, good. Low level exposure over an extended period of time really goes a long way when you're training a dog. Nice job. And I wanna point out too, we're, we haven't been asking her to do a ton of obedience. We're not asking for sit, stay, come constantly. We're just saying, hey, here's a world. Let's mosey on through it. All right, we got a dog running by here. Yes, good girl. And again, taking a treat there. So indicative of a dog that is quite content. Let's keep walking. So here, I mean, look, we're getting some tension on the leash here. Come on. I don't mind tension on the leash. Given how she's behaving overall right now, if I can discourage that kind of pulling by just gently calling her to me when she begins to pull, then, you know, I might do that if she's receptive to it. But if you just had a dog that was wild and was like, I can't believe this place I'm in, you might want to consider just tolerating the pulling while they explore. You have to prioritize what's more important. And socialization to the world is extremely important, perhaps more important than just about anything. Finding the balance between leash training and socialization can be a bit overwhelming if you're new. By the way, I have lots of information on those things in my books. So I'll have a link below. Kona, look at me. Yes. <laughs> getting look at me, he's getting all sorts of good behavior here. I mean, this is one of the better case scenarios that you could have with a puppy's first walk. So I'm liking this. It's worth pointing out, I have the leash attached to me as well, just as a redundancy, it's attached to my belt. I have no intention of letting go of the leash or getting careless. You can't count on a puppy running back to you if they get loose. I've noticed that some people have been asking about what I carry in my treat pouch. So I've got some real meat. And then I also have some great dog treats here. And of course, lots of poop bags available. So not too much to it. What do you guys carry in your treat bag? Tell me in the comments below. There's a Muscovy duck. Let's see what Kona thinks about the Muscovy duck, if anything. I think she's more interested in these blades of grass over here. Okay, Kona, good girl. Come on, Kona. See that high-pitched voice? She's really responsive to that. And there's another piece of plastic on the ground. Come on, world, pick up your garbage. Come on. So you can see, I mean, this is how we're starting to phase in basic compliant obedience training here as we go. But it's a fine line. Don't overdo it with a young dog. I mean, it just wouldn't be fair to her to ask for 100% constant attention in this particular scenario. Kona! Yeah, I love that. Good girl. So clapping my hands, making a high pitched sound, becoming a little more animated, kind of keeps her attention on me in those kinds of situations. Good. Right there, she initiated keeping up with me on her own. Kona, see this? No pooping here. We're gonna teach you to read next. For this walk, my intention really was just to go over the span of six or seven houses, maybe walk back and forth. But given how she has been behaving, I decided to take a much longer walk. And she's not disappointed at all. Got some bicycles coming up. 
This is why we do a lot of screensaver training with young dogs as well, just to let the world happen around them. Every puppy is different. You know, Inertia was a much more challenging puppy when it came to a training session like this. So you can definitely check out the Dog Training Experience series where I show you how I raised my own dog over her first year and a half plus so far. But you know, you take something like separation anxiety, which is something that Kona has had a more significant struggle with than Inertia did. All dogs have their strengths and their weaknesses, but this this is our first walk together. So as you get to know your individual dog, you'll get to know what they want most and what's going to give you the most bang for your buck as far as reinforcing desired behaviors go. And here we are, we're home. This is a great way to start off our day. She's done really great today on this leash walking session. In fact, this sets up my next planned training session with her of settle while inside the house and not in your crate. But we got a ways to go. So let's see if we can make some progress on this. I've just put Kona up into her crate here. And you can see, I mean, she's doing so well in her crate. This is a pretty good representation of how she is in the crate, provided I've worked with her and I've done training. Now, sometimes she gets a little antsy, but usually that's because I haven't worked with her enough just yet. But right now, we just had a long training session. She's doing great. I'm able to walk around the house here. I can go into the kitchen. She doesn't freak out when I get a few feet away. I'm out of sight and I'm walking around. And you might notice she's just being a great dog as I do this lap around the house here. You know, a little alert, but certainly acting within the range of acceptable and normal. You're such an angel. You're doing really well. You'll recall one of my primary objectives with Kona is to get her comfortable being alone in order to get a handle on the separation anxiety. But we don't always want her to be in the crate, right? I mean, we want her to be part of the family. We want her to be able to enjoy the house just as we do. And so what we've been working on is really phasing out the crate here and teaching her a real world settle. Okay. Good girl. What I'd like to do is see if we can just get her to go into a natural settle. Let me see if it happens naturally right now. She's a little excited. See, she, it looks like she was almost thinking about going back in the crate, but. Do you want to lie down? Very good, relax. Excellent job. And this is what we've been phasing in. Now let's say that you had work to get done or you wanted to tend to something else. Since we've done a training session, it's perfectly fair to have her doze off for a second, but I wouldn't leave her just like this if I had to leave the room or take my attention off of her. I would wanna make sure that she was safe and restrained still. So right now, sometimes she's on leash while I have her kind of tied out here. When I'm in the same room with her, I still supervise her, but this keeps her from going too many places, right? In case I do let my guard down. One thing I've been practicing is while well, she's settling right there, I'm over here. I'm just letting her experience being outside of the crate while behaving in a nice, chilled out, acceptable manner. So we're still controlling the environment, but it's a less strict control of the environment. And sometimes I'll even take the leash off when I know she's really passed out and I'm really paying attention to her. This is just kind of how we're phasing in that real world settle learning how to be in the house without getting into trouble or being destructive. She's adjusting really well with the other dogs in the house and just being a great dog overall. This is her interpretation of what a settle should look like. And really she's content to just relax. I don't see the need to necessarily reinforce with any treats, but if she was feeling a little extra anxious, you know, I might give her something to chew on. I've got these pup for beef tendons she has been loving. Here, you want this? Good. And that's a good way to let her have some quality time to herself, doing something she enjoys. This is actually her favorite thing to chew on that I've been giving her. And I like that she's not able to go through them and just consume them. They really last. And see, when I'm really confident that she's not going anywhere, if she's really into that chew, I'll give her a little bit of time where I'll actually take the lead off. and let her experience being out here with no lead on, you know? So now we're racking up the seconds and minutes where she gets to experience being leadless inside the house. So over the last couple of days anyway, I've just started phasing this in where she's starting to get more comfortable with being in the house and outside of the crate, because ultimately that is the goal. Sometimes she'll do some light playing with inertia as she's hanging out over here. Other times, you know, I've been successful in getting all three dogs to just be off leash and fall asleep.
These are the moments that we multi-dog households really live for. Every dog content, behaving, and just being good. I'm so proud of Kona. She's doing a really good job so far. These engage chews. Again, if you've got a puppy, they're probably gonna love these. These are freeze-dried beef livers and she's been loving these too. So, you know, using a variety of different good treats for your dog is very important to keep them engaged and interested. Sign up for my totally free digital dog training course, 30 Day Perfect Pup, and check out Pupford's other awesome products too. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and check out both of my books. I'll have all of the links below. We'll see you guys in episode 10 of your new puppy survival guide.